And welcome to another edition of T Zero Endurance Webinar Series. We have a great guest today. I, I am so amazed by this individual. Terry Grieg, it is so amazing to have you on the show today. Well, it's it's great to be here and it's good to speak with you again, Rob. It's been quite a while. It has been quite a while and you are such an inspiration because I always watch your videos. You know, it's one of those things where you find somebody that uh, really captures your attention and you want to keep watching it. And so what are you doing nowadays uh, that, you know, kind of indoors, a lot of people are challenged at this moment. What about you? What are you doing? Well, I've been actually really pretty fortunate. I've been doing quite a bit of um, training or working out indoors, but also uh, they, we only had our parks closed for a little bit. So I've been able to bike ride quite a bit um, outside mainly solo and then running outside too. But uh, I love to swim. So I'm really kind of missing uh, being able to go to the pool. <laughs> I can, I can understand that, but you know, it's, it's interesting because you are a very positive person and, and we'll get into the amazing things you have, but how do you stay positive in these challenging times? I mean, the things that you've gone through uh, that we'll talk about, but how do you stay positive? What can you give for a message for those people that are going, ah, I was going to do my first half Ironman or my first Ironman and now it's done. What do I do? What would you say to those people? Well, I I think the, the most important thing is your attitude. And so for me, I always say it's an attitude of gratitude. And I try and make a list of things to be grateful for. So, you know, whether it's still being able to, you know, have two hands, two arms, two legs, two eyes, that type of thing, just down to the very, you know, basics to um, still being able to, you know, who would have thought that we would have to be grateful that we can run outside? Um, right. you know, that, 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 that might not even, uh, be something that we, we could go do. So I like to, if I start getting kind of down in the dumps or that, you know, woe is me, poor is me, I really look back and start making a gratitude list. That's a fantastic way of putting it. And now you have a lot of perseverance and dedication because going back to your story. So in 2008, you went for, um, a qualifying spot. You wanted to get a qualifying spot at Ironman Louisville for Kona, right? And you missed it by five minutes. What did you right. feel like after that, after you missed that? Right. Well, it was, a, that was the very first Ironman that I ever did. And so I had no idea that I would kind of be that, that good. It was a really hot, hot day. And the woman in front of me, the fourth place woman uh, qualified, rolled down to fourth place and I was fifth. And, you know, I had all these crazy thoughts like, oh, my gosh, like I literally wore a Speedo to swim <laughs> in the Ohio River. I mean, I had really was like, I, I could tell you all the things that you shouldn't do. I did that that particular race. So, um, I love it. so then I thought, oh, well, shoot, I got to go back and try this again. And so in 2009, you know, I went back and tried and. Um, I knew my training hadn't been going, you know, I just didn't feel great. And, um, right. you know, it ended up then two weeks after I finished the the Ironman Louisville um, and I was 10 minutes slower, uh, but the conditions, the weather conditions were much better. So people really had, had better times. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, two weeks later, I found out I was really 10 minutes slower. Two weeks later, I found out that I had stage four colorectal cancer. So <sighs> Yeah. It's crazy. And and at that point, they gave you a 6% chance of survival and a two-year timetable. Uh, the five-year survival rate was 6% is, <sighs> is, at, at that time is what it was. Wow. Yeah. What, what was your mindset? What, do you, what, what goes through your mind at that time to even uh, move forward? Well, initially, when I got the phone call that it had uh, I mean, I had no idea. I, I w had been a nurse for 20 years, but I hadn't practiced in quite a while. And uh, when I got the phone call that it wasn't just in my my colon, that it had moved to my liver, I thought for sure I would be gone in, you know, six, eight months. I mean, because when, when I was in nursing, you had cancer in your liver. You were, you know, it was months if, you know, it was bad. So my first, and I had a 15-year-old daughter. I had I have a son and a daughter. My daughter at the time was 15. And so my first um, thought was that I, I'm not going to be around on her wedding day, basically. Ugh. 
home. So <sighs> yeah, that was my first, my first thought. And then kind of as time went on, um, it, it took, I mean, I, I was, we were talking a little bit earlier. I never dreamt that I'd be sitting here today, uh, right. 10 and a half years later. So, uh, you know, that's a miracle and, and all, all, all kinds of credit, you know, need to be given to medical team and my family and faith and all of that. But, um, but after a while, I kind of had this idea of, um, I called it the 6% rule. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you know, if somebody has got to be in that 6%, why, why shouldn't it be me? And that was another kind of, um, added mantra motto that I, that I live by. I absolutely love that 6% rule. I love it. And, and then, so you took it as, you know, a, a challenge against, uh, you wanted to be in that 6%, but then you didn't want to just survive it. You wanted to thrive after you survived it because you took on Ironman Kona, one of the toughest courses uh, there is known to Ironman courses or triathlons. Um, and you trained through getting chemotherapy. <laughs> so, what was that like? Well, so the first year was spent with um, radiation and chemo and, and surgeries. And then, um, and then the second year, uh, I, of course, Kona takes place in October and uh, July, the July before October. So in, I was diagnosed in 2009, summer of 2011. I sent my, uh, my, an email, my story into Iron Man. <laughs> Uh, asking for the uh, an inspirational slide because I thought I never ever gave up that dream of going to Kona, and I thought, well, the only way I'll ever get there is if I get one of these inspirational spots. Not ever dreaming or thinking that they would actually <laughs> choose me to go. I mean, that that's like the craziest thing ever. And um, I woke up the next morning after I sent off the email to the executive director. You probably know Peter Henney. Yep. And um, Peter responded back to me the next morning and I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, no way. And then we, we had a phone conversation and he said, I'll, I'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. Um, only for me to really find out that he had to make sure that what I was telling him was true. I guess they get, you know, I've had bogus stories come through and that type of thing. Oh, so, wow. uh, you know, so I, yeah, um, I talked with my medical team and um, I trained through chemo. I did the race on chemo. It was maintenance chemo. It wasn't the really heavy, heavy guns, but maintenance chemo. But and it's chemo, though. It's not it's not uh, goo or yeah. salts. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I think, you know, at the time I was probably the first athlete to actually do the event while on chemotherapy, which kind of made it um, made it a little bit different so yeah. what was that day what was that day like what was the feeling once you knew that you were going to finish um the race like how how did that feel after that long journey that you've taken from being diagnosed with cancer to now being the first person to cross this finish line with chemo and also at the same time having your family there <laughs> excuse me so it, you know, I, I always say I wish everybody could have that experience, that everybody could have that finish line and be able to cross it. And uh, and, and I, I think, you know, it's some, something that you almost cannot describe. So for me, um, about three miles out before you take kind of I call it the you before you end yep. up coming back to the finish line and you can hear Mike Riley announcing. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I, I knew when I when I. Uh, I knew at that point I literally was going to finish. I mean, that's kind of always, that was the, the goal was to finish. It wasn't about the time or, or that right. type of thing. And <clears throat> coming down the, um, the finishing shoot, you know, how many thousands of people are lined up and I glance over to my left and I see uh, three of my four nieces and my great nephew. And I just broke into tears. I mean, it was, I, I, and, and the whole section did this ugly cry. I had about 40 <laughs> friends there. And, and, you know, they had, I had these special t-shirts made and I put powered by hope because I wanted people on the course to know, you know, friends and family, to, they could see each other and all. Oh, and, um, and so that was, to me, that was amazing that I found my family, you know, just wow. not very 200 meters into the finishing shoot. 
And then, you know, you're thinking to yourself oh, in, in the camera crew, the Texas camera crew, I even said to them, you know, man, when I come across that finish line, I want to do something really cool. And so they're <laughs> kind of giving you these ideas and, um, you know, I'm thinking about it. And my friend even like is like, OK, make sure you take all your reflective stuff off, you know, your lit necklaces and wristbands yeah. and and I hit that finish line and I, I mean, I don't even, I see today what I did when I crossed it, but it was nothing like what, you know, what the Texas crew said, oh, you should do this or do that. Or, you know, <laughs> um, and it was just this overwhelming feeling of, of, of accomplishment, of joy, of cancer doesn't have me, I have cancer. And um, in this, um, this gratitude to my family and my friends and my medical team that believed and gave me really the chance to um, fulfill this kind of crazy dream that I had. So, it's a, it's yeah. amazing. And, and you talk about hope and I, I love your foundation. Um, your foundation is just a, a fabulous foundation powered by hope. And the word hope stands for how ordinary people endure. Tell me more about Powered by Hope. What is What does it entail? So uh, when I finished Kona and, and uh, lots of people heard about it and I got to go on talk shows and do all kinds of really cool stuff. And, and it, it was very important was um, that I wanted to raise awareness for colorectal cancer because it was the one cancer that nobody wanted to talk about. Um, they think if you're a woman and you're in your 40s that it must be breast cancer. Right. And um, two weeks after I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, one of my sister, both my sisters went and had colonoscopies. One had precancerous polyps and my other sister was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. So I, um, I saved my sister's mm -hmm. life right away. So a lot of what I did was about um, raising awareness around, around colon cancer. And, and, I don't know, people, they just, they wanted to hear my story. They want, So I kind of ended up with this crazy idea about hope and being powered by hope. And that really, when you hear the words, you have cancer, that is the greatest race of your life. And I thought, what if, what if I had this medal, a medal of hope, like, like, I wish I don't have one to show you, but literally like a medal that we win or that we are given at the end of the race, a race that we do. But what if I gave those to people when they've been diagnosed with cancer and it would serve as a reminder to them to not give up hope that this is a big, long, you know, the Ironman of all Ironman races, but to never give up. And it, and it, and it was, it symbolized hope, hope that one day that we would find a cure for cancer, but really the hope of how do we live and make the most of every day that we have here on this earth. Yeah. Um, and so that, that, that's kind of um, how how my foundation came to be. So we have three pillars. The first is um, is the inspirational pillar, which is about giving the medals and the coins, coins of courage to to people that are in the fight. Um, recognition, where we recognize healthcare workers that work strictly with oncology patients, anywhere from a housekeeper to a, a receptionist to to a, a a, a physician or nurse um, who goes above and beyond and gives awesome. gives to them. And then um, our third is community, which is really kind of my biggest pillar now. Um, and it's about raising, it's, it's giving back to the community. But what we've done really well is we've probably raised over $2 million for cancer wow. research locally in St. Louis. So, and we do that by fielding teams um, at different events, whether it be a 5k or a bike ride or, something along that line. So that, that is so awesome. Out, I don't know that type of thing. So I love yeah. it. And people can go to terrygreeg.com and find out more. You also have a fantastic book that is on there. Oh. Um, same, same uh, verbiage powered by hope mm -hmm. um, that people mm -hmm. can go on and read about your story. I think it's just a fantastic read that people should go on there and get. And then also on that site in the store, they have those medals. Um, so that if you have right. a loved one who's going through a cancer battle and needs that little hope, you can go on there and get uh, one for them as well. I love that. Um, you know, kind of transitioning here, 
there was this TV show that I saw you on that you had some great <laughs> dance moves. Um, I don't know if people know this lady. Her name is Ellen. Tell me more about this episode. <laughs> so, you know, the, I, I wasn't, I have to clarify because I didn't really make it quite to the stage for Ellen, but. Um, oh, you were on stage. I, don't. <laughs> well, that, that was enough. You know, I always say you can't, you, you, you got to put your dreams out there or they'll never happen. So people right. never, ever thought I'd ever get to Kona, you know, and that yep. happened. And then I had this crazy idea that I wanted to get on the Ellen show. And, um, and, and it pretty much happened. My sister-in-law got tickets, won tickets at a, at an auction. And, and, uh, I took my family and, and our local, uh, television, um, NBC affiliate called out there and said, we got this woman coming out that kind of has a cool story. And so, yeah, I got to meet Ellen, got to go backstage. Um, they did a whole, um, kind of, I don't know, video blog on me and that kind of stuff. And then it was one of the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> and we won, we won tickets to come. Well, we won, they, it was a giveaway of the audience and we got to go back for one of the 12 days of Christmas. So yeah, went, went and saw Ellen twice in, in like a three week period. It was crazy. So very cool. <laughs> that is, it is so awesome. And, and that's the thing is like, I love that how you put it. It's like, if you don't put it out there, you're not never going to get it. And I think that's, that's such a powerful thing from somebody who, you know, looks at the last 10 years of life as a gift and as an opportunity. Um, that's such a power, powerful, powerful thing to do. Now, when we talk about endurance athletes, there's that elite mindset um, that everybody's looking for. And somebody who's went through things like yourself, uh, what would you say are the top two things that you would say somebody... Uh, to frame that elite mindset on a daily basis, what are top two things that you would think they would need from your experiences? Wow. Top two. <laughs> I know it's hard to well, limit, but it is really hard. Uh, I, I really believe that uh, what a lot of people don't realize is, is let's say for instance, in Ironman, they think it's really three disciplines. And I always say it's actually four because I think you have, you know, you not only do you train for the swim, the bike and the run, but um, I really believe you have to train your brain yeah. what, for whatever it is, you know, for that time being out there or for when you hit that, that pain tolerance that you think you can't go another step further, um, whatever kind of comes up. So I always say train your brain is probably one thing that separates many elite athletes. And then, um, you know, know your destination, know your goal. Know, know where you want to get to. And I think that that makes a big, a big difference. I love that because on, on the front of your website is one of my favorite things. And I was reading it and I just had to smile because it says, today I have two major goals to inspire others and to save lives. That is yeah. such a powerful statement. And to inspire others, you know, it's through your actions. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, what are the next actions that you have uh, heading up into the future as far as road races or any kind of events that you have for Powered by Hope that are coming up? So uh, I always thought that I, I got to do Kona and then I also got to go do uh, the World Championship 70.3 twice, uh, the last time in Montreblanc. And it was an amazing, beautiful uh, finish line and, and race. I don't know if you've gotten to do. Yeah. That's one of there, my favorites. What a venue. So yeah. I thought, well, crossing those two, I'll never, I'll never go back. Uh, and then I, I've been able to complete the six world major marathons too. So I've crossed all those, those finish lines. Um, but uh, somebody uh, in, in, I, I've been very fortunate to be on a chemo break for about two years. So I am just now really physically starting to feel um, not that I necessarily would be competitive, but I feel like I have some strength um, and, and can train really probably fairly efficiently now, not just train to finish. So uh, I was, I did a 50 K in December. That was kind of another goal or dream to be able to run a 50 K. So I was able to do that wow. down in Dallas. Um, and then the other thing that I've uh, put on the race calendar, just to really kind of go back and do, and I, I didn't think I would, but it was to, um, to run um, the, the new half Ironman in Memphis. 
And the reason I chose it and the reason I pick whatever events I'm going to go do, whether it is a race or an event, um, is for the reason behind it. And Memphis is for St. Jude. So yeah. anytime I go and do a race now or do these types of things, it's really either to raise awareness or raise money for a cause, usually cancer related, but not always. So, um, you know, whenever something really interesting comes up, um, I was, and I can't say that it's totally, this happened, this, this, I got the phone call right before the pandemic and I, I put it on the back burner, but um, the American Cancer Society asked me if I would consider doing the seven marathon, seven continents in seven days. Um, Do it. And so, <laughs> uh, I'll join you. <laughs> I, oh, now you're on. I mean. Oh, no, no. oh I didn't do that, did I? <laughs> I know, I know. We'd, have, we'd have a little too much fun. Board. Would that be amazing, though? That oh, would be, be crazy. Amazing. Yeah, it would be fun. So, yeah. Yeah, you'd have know. to really so slow knows? up your pace for me. <laughs> oh, I think so. <laughs> but, but you, you might want to leave your Ironman, uh, your uh, your fireman stuff uh, at home on this on that one. Yeah. That I'd be, I'd be, yeah, it'd be, that'd be yeah. amazing. I, I think we're gonna have to plan that. I think this is a, this could be a good idea here. Okay, all right. We have to raise a lot of money. That's the only problem. We we do, but we can do it. I think you and I can we do. Could. It. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Antarctica, well, Dubai. There's always a reason behind these things, right? Like, why yeah. why have we reconnected all of a sudden? Who knows? Exactly. A world Marathon Challenge. Here we come. <laughs> there you go. I love it. So now, you know, you look at you look at your life. You look at the challenges that you've overcome. Why do you love challenging the limits so much? What is it, what does it bring to your life that uh, that you didn't have when it's the status quo? Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm actually in recovery. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I have, uh, let's see, 27 years of sobriety. Continuous Congratulations. Sobriety. I celebrated in March. So honestly, uh, and the only reason I bring that up is because I think it's kind of in my DNA that if one is good, 12 is better or 112 miles or whatever, you know, I have just always been one of these, even as a kid, always wanted to push my my body mentally to the limit um yeah. whether it was in a good way or unfortunately a bad way um and so i think you know this kind of craziness and wanting to uh, go the distance it, now i mean you know you kind of substitute i think one thing for another and this happens yeah. to be my substitution i guess it's so. a it's a good substitution and you're and you're creating this impact in other people's lives like you said, imp inspiring others and, and actually saving lives by, you said two million dollars. That's that's no uh, you know small amount or small fee. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. wanted to end it with what would be your advice for those individuals um, in this challenging time? Because we all have those dark moments, and you have given so many great, uh, so much great advice. What would be that last parting shot that you'd want people to remember uh, to take forward? Well, so you'd sent me kind of a, some questions that you would maybe kind of roll into as we were talking today. And one of them was, um, do you have a favorite quote? And so I would probably roll this quote into um, to ending this. And it actually, the, the, the person that I would quote is Diana Nyad when she swam from Cuba to Miami and uh, she came up out of the water after 103 miles and like 50 plus hours of continuous, you know, swimming. And yeah. you remember how her face was just all swollen and, and, and she, can you imagine walking out of that water? She physically had to walk out of the water with no help at all. And she held up three fingers and she wanted the world to know three things. And I think that they applied, you know, whatever experience, whether, you know, today we're sitting in this middle of a pandemic, but she said three things. Number one is you're never too old. And I like to say you're never too young to achieve your dream or your goal. She said, number two, um, never alone, that she didn't swim through that ocean and get through the sharks and do all that without, you know, people planning these and studying the water and the weather and, you know, nutritionists and all that coaching, all those types of things. So never alone. And number three, she said, never, ever, ever give up. 
Wow. So that would be my uh, that would be my closing uh, statement to everybody. Terry, it has been such a pleasure reconnecting with you. You are such an inspiration. If you want to find out more about Terry, go to terrygreek.com. You can get her book, Powered by Hope, or find out more about her fantastic foundation that is just changing lives and creating an impact. So thank you so much, Terry, for being on today. Thanks, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Stay well. Nope. Hey, thank you very much. And thanks for joining us, everybody. You can go to IWishIWasRacing.com to find out who's on the schedule for next time. And we'll see you again.